how to become a king. Oh, Father, I just feel like praying this morning. Father, I pray that you will bless this session. I pray that you bless everybody you bring. You strategically bring the right people, the people that you really want to minister to, and you will let, not let this word fall, fall, fall on the ground. I pray that you will cause this word to actually raise kings, that from today, from this revelation, from the power of your word, that men and women will really arise wherever they are, in whatsoever nations, in whatsoever profession, that men and women will begin to rise up and they will be crowned on earth by their profession, by their nations, their, by their fields of influence, by their land of promise, that the crowning of God will begin to be manifested in the life of everyone that's going to watch this message today. Cause this message to just be very transformational. And let the truth, let this truth become a reality in the life of every one of your children and in the life of your church generally. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go now. You know, the Bible says that we are kings. The Bible calls us kings and priests. Okay, despite the fact that <laughs> Christians are supposed to be kings and priests, we are supposed to be ruling on the earth. We are the ones who are supposed to be managing the earth for God. We are the ones who are supposed to be in charge. But despite that, not too many Christians are in charge. Not too many Christians are ruling and reigning on earth. Not too many Christians are really living as if they are kings of the, of, for God, or of the kingdom of God. They are not living as even pre, pre, princes of the kingdom of God. And it's like we don't have an idea. It's like we don't have a clue how to actually rule and reign. It's like we don't know how to rule. It's like we don't know how to reign. And that is a trouble. That is a concern. That's a concern. Uh, that is, uh, that's a concern. That is something that is really very troubling. You know, that, 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 that is really very, very, very troubling that Christians, we proclaim the word, we know it, we claim the promise, we uh, say we are kings, we are priests all the time, we talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk. How many, are, how many of us are actually the kings and the rulers in our own promised land? Even in that particular place where we are called to be, how many of us are really ruling and reigning there? Not too many. But that's where we're supposed to be. That's where we belong. Well, our place is supposed to be, as children of God, we're supposed to be rulers and, and the rules and the rulers, the kings on the earth. So now, this message today, I will just talk, be talking about one quality. You don't need to, I don't want to give you a headache. I will just give, recommend to you, I will just give you one quality, just one quality. Just one, not 10 qualities of how to become a king, not 20 qualities of how to become a king, just one if there is one single quality that will crown you, that will put the crown on your head, it is that one quality that I want to talk about today. If there is, it, you could become a king just by mastering one quality. And this quality is all over in the Bible. This quality is talked about, you know, and it litters the whole word of God. And if there's anybody that's supposed to have and possess this quality above everybody else, it's supposed to be Christians. Because we have the secret already given in the Bible. But we just ignore it or we just pass it by. We are more taken away by some superstitious things like religion, religiosity, prayers. We just want, we want miracle. We Christians would rather depend on miracle than on the real thing that will really make you a, a king. Yes, you could become a miracle, you know, you could become a king uh, by, by miracle, but that is more an exception. But if you become a king by miracle without this quality, you will be chased out of that king, kingship. You will be removed very fast. But if you don't have, but if you have this quality, even if you don't have quality, even if you don't have miracles, this quality alone could take you and crown you 
as a king. Just one quality. So you don't need to look for 10, 20, 50 qualities. Just one quality that will crown you as a king any day, anywhere. You could be in Africa, this same king. I mean, this same quality will work for you. You could be in America, this same quality will, will, will identify you from among the crowd. It will separate you from your, from, from, from your brethren. It will separate you from your peers. And it will and elevate you and put you on high and put that crown on your head. One quality. <laughs> Just one quality that will make you a king. This, this quality is a king maker. It's a king maker. Somebody said it's love. No, love has another function. There's another place for love. Somebody said hard work. Well, close, but we are, when we're talking about just kingship, being a king, not just the promise, you know, all of us have the promise, but I'm talking about the reality now. I'm talking about the reality, the real one quality that will make you a king. That quality is called diligence. Diligence. Remember that word. Diligence. Remember that word. Diligence. Diligence. Diligence will make you a king any day, any time. Diligence will make you a king even among tyrannies. Diligence will make you a king in any nationality. Diligence will make you a king anywhere you find yourself. Diligence will make you a king no matter your sex. Diligence will make you a king even if you are a woman. Diligence will make you a king even if you are old. Diligence will make you a king even if you are young. Diligence will make you a king no matter who you are. If you could master this one quality, if you could master this one quality, if you could master this one quality, this one quality called diligence, you are ready to go. You are ready to begin to rail to a rule on your on your in your world now diligence is a way maker diligence is a barrier breaker diligence will break the barrier on the way and push you through no matter how difficult things have been i mean diligence will part a way for you where it, 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 it where you know people say nobody works there Diligence will not just make part, part, part the way for you, it will put a crown on your head. Diligence is the quality that makes kings, that makes people king. So how to become a king? It's unfortunate that everywhere, read through the Bible, you will see the traces of diligence everywhere from Genesis to Revelation. But you hardly hear people talk about it or people teach about it these days in the churches. Instead of that, they will be giving you false hope. False hope that you just, you don't need to do anything. Just expect miracle. And some miracle will happen. Or some breakthrough will happen. Or some pastors will pray for you and some miracles will take place. Or just give some offering. Or give tithe. And give, or give a prophetic offering. Or faith offering. Or some other kind of offering. And then the miracle will happen. You'll become this. You'll become that. Deception of the highest order. Deception. Churches have become centers of deception these days. Instead of us to teach people how to work hard, how to work diligently, we keep on giving them false hope and telling them things that are not really possible, things that are not real, things that are not real. So diligence is your key to elevation. It doesn't have to be supernatural. Let, let me just show you, let me just show you, uh, let me just show you a scripture that, is, that I like so much about when it talks about diligence. Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs talks a lot about diligence. And that is because the person who wrote Proverbs is the wisest man on earth. He's the wisest man on earth. Solomon knew something about diligence. And Proverbs 22, 29. I'm sure you all know the scripture. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. It says... Seeth, or have you seen a man diligent in his business? Have you really seen a man that is truly diligent? Have you really seen a man that is truly diligent? Have you really seen a man that is diligent? Have you really seen a man that is truly diligent? The key is to be truly diligent. Are you diligent for, for real? Are you really diligent? 
Have you seen a man that is truly committed, that is truly diligent? I will later be giving you the characteristics of diligence, okay? I will, I will, I will, I will break that down so you, I mean, you can trust. If as a Sunday started this topic, you are going to get a full layout, okay? Don't worry about it. Just continue. So, okay. So, have you seen a man that is diligent in his own business? It doesn't matter what business it is. If you are, if you are a, 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 a street sweeper and you are diligent as a street sweeper, you will become a king in that sphere of life. If you are a cleaner, just cleaning, cleaning plates, cleaning clothes, and you learn the act of diligence, and you really learn to be diligent as a cleaner, before you know it, <laughs> people will be looking for you everywhere. Diligence will create a demand for you. Now, diligence will create a demand for you. Diligence will make you to be in demand. <laughs> now, if you are a cleaner, before you know it, you'll be the head of all cleaners in that place. In fact, as a matter of fact, you might be exalted from being the head of the cleaners to become the head of the whole industry. <laughs> Why? Because diligence is a kingmaker. Diligence is a kingmaker. Diligence is a kingmaker. Diligence is a kingmaker. <laughs> diligence will put a crown upon your head. Diligence will put a crown upon your head so so he's saying here have you ever seen i mean this is what you know uh solomon who is the brightest and the you know i mean the wisest of all men do I, would ever live all right and he is say, talking this with such a gusto with such an assurance with such affirmity with such very verity with such you know faith and with such confidence and he's saying have you seen it's like almost betting on it it, it was almost betting on it almost betting on it have you seen you show me someone who is truly diligent now he's not talking about somebody who works hard only but who works hard but diligently he's not talking about somebody who just works but someone who knows how to work with diligence, who works diligently. It's not talking about somebody who just does a lot of work or a lot of things, but somebody who does a lot of things, but diligently. It's not just talking of somebody who, you know, who, who, you know, who is always busy, but somebody who is busy, but diligent in everything. It's not so, talking about somebody who is full of activities. But someone who in all those activities is careful enough to be diligent. You show me that person. It's always a betting game. It's always a betting game. You show me that person. Show me that person. Show me. Show me. Show me the diligent. Show me the diligent. In China, show me diligence. In America, show me the diligent. In Europe, show me the diligent. In, uh, in Russia, show me a diligent man. You know, anywhere. South Africa, show me someone who is diligent. Nigeria, show me a diligent man. Burkina Faso, show me a diligent man. Fiji, or, you know, it doesn't matter. Show me a diligent man anywhere, anytime, and I will show you a king. Show me a diligent man, and I will show you a king. <laughs> show me a diligent man, and I will show you a king. Show me a diligent man, and I will show you a king. Show me a diligent man, I will show you a king. Show me a diligent man, I will show you a king. The lives of all the great Bible heroes that we all admire. A thorough analysis and a careful examination will, will lead you to one single quality. Diligence. Is it David you want to talk about? Is it David? You want to talk about David? You want to talk about David? He is synonymous. His whole life is synonymous to diligence. His whole life is synonymous to diligence. Is it Joseph you want to talk about? Is it Joseph? His whole life is synonymous 
It's intelligence. <laughs> is it Nehemiah? Is it Nehemiah? It is diligent that made him that the, the, the restore of Israel. Is it not diligent that made Joseph the prime minister in the foreign land as a slave from becoming a slave? Diligence will take you from the status of a slave to the status of a ruler. Diligence, diligence, diligence. <laughs> diligence will take you from any status and crown upon your head a crown of honor. A crown of honor. And put upon your head a crown of honor. Diligence. Diligence. So he said, show me. Show me. Show me. Show me a diligent person. Show me diligent person. Show me a diligent person. And I will show you a king. Show me a diligent person. And I will show you a king. Show me a diligent person in his business, in whatsoever he does. You say, what matters is not the business. What matters is not the profession. What matters is the attitude. So it's not all, always about what you do, but how you do it. It's not always what you do, but how you do it. But if you are smart enough to also be led by the Spirit, and you are doing something that God has created you to do, you are doing something in your own area of calling, then you are going to be exceptionally good. Exceptionally good. And you will reign. You will reign thoroughly. And you will reign for good. You will reign for good. So, so he says, show me a man that is diligent in his business. That man. <laughs> that man that is diligent. That man that is diligent in all his, in, in, in all his business shall stand before kings. Only kings. That is his own circle. You will not go beyond any, be, be, below anything. Kingship, kingly, loyal, royal. Royal. Royalty belongs to the diligent. He will stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. You could stand. You could start with mean men, but you will not remain there. <laughs> you could start from you know from ordinary people, but you will not remain there. Diligence will always remove you from the company of the failures. <laughs> Diligence will always remove you from the company of the ordinary people. You cannot be diligent and have ordinary life. You cannot be truly diligent and have an ordinary success. If you are truly diligent, your success will not be ordinary. You will not be sitting down among ordinary people only. You will stand among kings. That is your place. That is your place. Your place is among royalty. That is what diligence does for you. Now, Proverbs, another scripture, Proverbs 12, 24. Proverbs 12, 24. Proverbs 12, 24 says, The hand of the diligent will rule. The hand of the diligent will always be a rule. The hand, the destiny that is, of the diligent is to rule. The destiny, the place of the diligent is rulership, is kingship. The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Now, let me show you the example of somebody we all admire. Let me show you the example of the king of Israel, King David. The, the King David, a man after God's own heart. First Samuel, chapter 18, verse 5. I want to read from First Samuel 18, 5. So, First Samuel 18, 5. 18, verse 5. Just one verse. First Samuel 18, 5. It talks about David here. 1 Samuel 18.5 
And David went out where, wheresoever Saul sent him. All right? I mean, Saul was his oppressor. Saul, Saul was his oppressor. Despite that, he went about wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. And behaved wisely. And Saul set him over, even though Saul hated him. And Saul saw him as a competitor and wanted to destroy him. Yet Saul could not resist the virtue that was coming out of this man. You know, even your enemies will not be able to resist your virtue. And you, you know, that is the way diligence operates. It doesn't matter if people love you or they hate you. The diligence that will be coming, that with which you do your things, the power, diligence has got some force in it. Diligence has got some power in it. And the power and the potential, the grace that is, that is imbibed in diligence, the grace and the power that is in that quality is a power, the power that makes kings. Is the power that crowns, is the power that elevates. So even if your people are the even if it is your oppressors or your, your enemies are the ones who are responsible for the elevation and they are the ones responsible for your destiny, but because you are so diligent, diligence will be pushing them away from the road. Diligence will be making them to do things, your diligence will be making them to do things that they never believed they would do. Your diligence will be forcing their hands to do something that is against their mind. Diligence that you are displaying, if you display a high level of diligence, even your own enemy will set a table before you. If you display a high level of diligence, even God will use the hand of the enemy to put the crown on your head. <laughs> just as we see here, just as we see here, just as we see here, it's amazing. It's an amazing ability. So there is an ability that is hidden in that quality. You see, the Bible says that every word of God is full of grace and truth. So the grace that the word diligence carries, there is, so, so the word diligence is loaded with grace. The word diligence is loaded with, with, with truth. The grace that diligence gives you, the, the grace that the word, is, the, the word carries and the word is loaded with is elevation, is, you know, is, is a kingmaker grace. It, so that quality, when you display it, it pushes you to, 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 to kingship. Even if you are not thinking of kingship, it, ki it pushes you to rulership. It is the grace that is upon every word. There is a grace upon every word. There is a hidden ability. It's just like when you take your capsule. It's just like when you take your capsule. You see, there are different capsules. There are capsules that you could take. They could look alike, like the same, but there are capsules that are meant to cure headache. There are caps because that is the content of that council. There are ca caps, capsules, sorry. There, there are capsules that have the content to remove your lump, your growth. That is the content. That is the content. That is what that thing has inside of it. Then there is, uh, you know, you know, there, there are different. You could you could have ten different capsules, but they have, you know, uh, they are, they are carrying out different functions and different duties. Because they have different things inside of them, different content inside of them. So when it comes to diligence, you know, even though the word of God is full of grace and truth, but there are different graces. You know, the grace is what it talks about. So when we are talking about diligence, it carries the grace, the ability, the innate power and the grace and ability to make kings. The innate, in, in, you know, in, 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 inner content of Diligence is the grace and the power that pushes you and makes you to rule. That is the grace it contains. That is the ability that it carries. So when you display that quality, I mean, it doesn't matter what forces are against you and forces that you are facing. This grace will begin to just create waves for you and waves for you. Waves and waves. That is what happened here. And that is why, even though, no matter the amount of hatred that, that, uh, that, uh, that David had, I mean, that Saul had for David, he couldn't resist it. He couldn't resist it. He couldn't resist elevating and making him be promoted. Because he's not the one, actually, that is promoting David, that was promoting David. You know what was promoting David? Diligence was promoting him. He's not the one that was making way for David. You know what was making way for David? 
Diligence was making way for David. It is not the king Saul that was that was making him, you know, you know, the king or whatever. What what was making him king? What was making him to rule is the inherent ability, the 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 the, the content, the power, and the force that is contained in that in that in that quality that we call diligence. So diligence is a force. Diligence is a force. Diligence is a force. It will push away all kind of hindrances. It will push away all kind of, you know, distractions and all kind of things that are trying to hinder you. And, you know, it will push it away. It will push it away. It will push away everything that is trying to block your way. So, and it will even use it as your catalyst. <laughs> and it will use it as your catalyst. It will use it as your catalyst. So David went out because what what is what is the, the the manifestation of diligence here? David was so diligent he will carry out all instructions that Saul gave. He was so strong, he was so consistent, he was so consistent in his diligence that he would do and go and went everywhere and did everything that Saul sent him. If you will be as diligent like that. You will not have to be worried. You will not have to be concerned how to make it in this world. To make it in this world is so easy. Because most people do things just the minimum. Most people just do the minimum things. Most people just do the surface things. Most people just do what they are required to do. But a diligent man will go beyond the extra. He will go beyond what is required to do. A diligent man will go the extra mile. A diligent man will not wait for instruction before he does what he needs to do. A diligent man will carry out not just the surface of an instruction. A diligent man will carry out all the instruction thoroughly to the letter. To the letter. Diligence. Diligence. So that's the kind of person that uh, David was. Uh, so he was. He went to what, what, uh, wheresoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. Now, what does that mean? To behave yourself wisely. To behave yourself wisely means that to think before you act. To behave wisely means to think before you act. Behave wisely means to think before you act. To think out everything. To plan out everything and to make sure that before you act, you are guaranteed success in whatever you are doing. No, make, no place for error. No, it's not a try and error thing. Do you know that you are doing something that you have already calculated and uh, counted and calculated and planned out very well? Thoroughly, pre thorough preparation. So, uh, and behave himself wisely. And Saul set him over. The men of war, you say, diligence is even stronger than strength. Diligence is stronger. It's more powerful than strength. Diligence is more powerful than power. In fact, you could have somebody who is the king, like Saul was the king, but uh, David was the servant. <laughs> if you are the king, you are the servant who is diligent in the court of the king, <laughs> you are more powerful than the king himself. Even though you are not the king right now, but if you are diligent where you are, you will be more, you will be recognized as more powerful, being more powerful than the king himself. If you are the, if you are the slave in the, in, the, in, the, in the king's yard and you are diligent, your authority will, will exceed the authority of the throne. That is what diligence does for you. That's what diligence does for you. <laughs> That's what diligence does for you. So, so, so uh, he behaved himself wisely, and Saul set him over the men of war. I mean, the men of war, war are people is a symbol of power. They are a symbol of, you know, authority. They are a symbol of strength. He so said, it is not the men of strength that reign. It is men that are truly diligent in their deal that reign that reign in life. You see, it's people who reign in life are not the men that know what to do, but they are the men that know how the thing is done. People that rule and reign in the world are not the people that have the money, but the people that know how money works and how to spend the money. They are the ones who reign. So if you are the, if you, if you are the billionaire and I'm the one managing your money, <laughs> you tell me who is in charge. <laughs> if you are the one that has the vision, 
but I'm the one who knows how the vision works and how to carry the vision out. You tell me. You tell me who is reigning, who is the king. <laughs> so the official status of a king is one thing, but the, the, the real status of a king is the, it belongs to the place of diligence. So it is only the person that is diligent that really has the place of rulership. It is the person that is diligent that is really taking, that is really in the authority, that is really ruling and reigning. It's just like, uh, it's just like Joseph in, in, in Egypt. You know, they had a king. The king was Pharaoh. But you tell me who was ruling. The diligent was the one ruling. It's just like uh, in Babylon. All right, there are their kings. But you tell me who was ruling. <laughs> you tell me who was in charge. The diligent was the one who was in charge. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? I mean, I mean, we saw this quality of diligence even in Jesus. As young as 12 years old, nobody could stand him. Nobody could stand him. Nobody could stand him. Why? Thanks to diligence. Thanks to diligence. I mean, Paul, Paul was the least of all the apostles, all right? Paul was the least. He was the like the youngest. He was not even there when Jesus was around. He didn't even get to see him live. He was not even trained by him. But because of his diligence, he was so diligent. And he was diligent not in the church, not in, uh, in, the, in the team of Jesus. He was diligent outside. He was diligent in his worldly pursuit. He was diligent in his worldly pursuit. And Jesus went there to get him. Jesus needed it. God needed it. Because if, no matter where you are diligent, they will be looking for you. God sent for Paul. I mean, he had his two, Jesus had his 12 disciples. He had all the people that were with him. But he had to go and get Paul because of the amount of and the kind of diligence Paul was displaying in his law, in his law education, in, in studying by his, in his uh, law education. God needed such a diligent hand to manage his affairs, the affairs of the kingdom. If you are diligent, they will look for you. If you are truly diligent, even when you don't know or of something, some opportunity that exists in somewhere, that diligence will make advertisement for you and will find a way for you. And they will be looking for you to crown your king. <laughs> Is that not amazing? Is that not amazing? I think that is cool. <laughs> I think that is cool. I know that is cool. Now, so he says in, uh, in this 1 Samuel 18, 5, And David went out to wherever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. You know, that's why I'm very concerned about the kind of gospel that they are teaching in my country and about the, about the kind of gospel that is celebrated today in the charismatic world. I'm very concerned. 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 I'm really concerned. I'm truly concerned. I'm truly concerned. We are now being taught to look for miracle workers. We are now being taught to chase after men that will give us something for nothing. We are now being given artificial messages of deception. We are now being told that all that we need to do is just offering. We are now being told all we need to do is just to give some money. We are now substituting money to be the answer for everything. We are now creating the impression that give, 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 money, money, money is the key to elevation. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And people who don't have the real qualities, just the only quality they have, the only quality you need to have in this kind of Christianity today is just to be a miracle worker. As long as you are a miracle worker, <laughs> you are the greatest man. It doesn't matter if you don't have qualities. It doesn't matter if you don't have, you know, character. It doesn't matter if you don't have uh, godliness. It doesn't matter if you don't know God. It doesn't matter if you, know, you don't know Christ. The only thing you need to do he should be able to be, do some miracles and to be able to, you know, give some prophecies and tell some people that they will have some miracle today and tomorrow without doing anything for it and without working for it. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. And everybody now, they, they think the, oh, the essence of miracle is to work miracle. Is to, I mean, the essence of ministry is to work miracle. Everybody just wants to work miracle right now. And um, as if that's the only thing you need to be to be relevant. 
So people are doing any all kind of things to be able to do miracles. People are going to herbalists, people are going to black magic, people, people are doing magic, people are doing manipulations. I mean, I, I, I saw a video, or, yeah, a video of a pastor who, who brought out Cain, and he was caning people. He was beating people in his church. He was beating you know, a young man and a woman just because, you know, you know they, they had sex because they committed some sin, a sin. When people committed sin, when they brought a woman that committed sin to Jesus, he covered the woman. He covered the woman. He covered the woman. He covered the woman. Covered for her. Gave her protection. Covered for her. Sh covered her from shame. Covered her from disgrace. And then set her free. And then said, told her, you can go now and sin no more. But he first of all offered her protection. But this man brought out a cane. I mean, he's on YouTube. He's on, uh, he's on YouTube and he's on Facebook. Brought out a cane, started beating, and he was beating the, the girl, the girl, the, the lady more than the man. What a disgrace. Then the next day he came forward and he said, I have 10 or so. I don't know how many. I can't remember how many now. I had maybe 10 uh, four wheels or, you know, jeeps. And, uh, you know, I have 20, 10 or 10, 20 Mercedes. I have these. I, I mean, the church is full of people taking their thousands and millions and their hard-earned money to that church. So I saw one Ghanaian brother, and I asked the Ghanaian brother, why is it that that man's church is still full of people? They told me, because it's a miracle worker. Because it's a miracle worker. Because it's a miracle worker. And the same thing in my country, Nigeria. I had one, 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 one of my, you see, this guy actually is my friend. You know, he's my distant friend. He's not my close friend, but he's my distant friend. You know, he, at least that's what I regard him to be. And I think, I mean, he's going to, to um, pub, publicly to, to, to declare that a governor was going to die just because the governor was trying to san uh, sanitize his city. And, uh, and he said the governor was going to die. And the governor was so smart. The governor is much more smarter than this pastor. The governor said, give me the date. Give me the date I'm going to die. <laughs> because when you give me the date, I will not die. <laughs> and when I don't die, everybody will know that you're a false prophet. You know, you know, give me the date that I'm going to die. Give me the date. Give me the date. And you will not believe it. And these churches are full of people. And people keep on applauding these kind of people. When I watched that video, when this guy was saying the governor was going to die and he was saying, doing this and that, people were shouting and screaming, yeah, yeah. When Jesus said to, to love your enemies, to love your enemies, to love your enemies, and people are so hypnotized, gullible, foolishness has taken over the church. So it is now because of some, some pastor's prayers that you, 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 should be, you should become anything in life today. It's not because you are diligent. It's not because of the qualities that God himself possesses and that Jesus himself possesses and that God is telling us to possess. We just want, have, want to have a, a free ride through life. We want to have a free ride through life. And these are the most popular churches in my country. These are the most popular churches in my country. These are the most popular churches in my country. I mean, there is a pastor friend of mine that I love so much, and I, I respect him so much. And he came to me one day, and he was telling me that, oh, pastor, he was telling me I have one guy, well, you know, this, this is another guy who is one of the great, you know, most respected pastor in Nigeria now coming up. And he's very, I mean, having thousands of thousands, so many services. And, he, you know, the guy came to England one day, and it was it was doing miracles and people were falling about and the, this man of God was telling me this is a do pastor he was saying wow this man is having so much power I want to be like him I was so I was so broken why do you want to be like him oh if you see the power people are just falling up and down people are just falling left and right <laughs> I said because the people are falling left and right oh yeah the place was jam packed. He said, because it was jam-packed. He said, yeah. He said, if you know the thing that the guy is building right now, eh? if you know the thing the guy is building, if you know, if you see the thing the guy is building, those are the qualities. Those are the factors that make you to want to be like that guy.
let me talk more about that now. How do you learn more to be diligent? How do you learn to be diligent? From that, from that uh, uh, scripture that we read about David, by the way, I did, did I read it to the end? Yeah, he put him over the men of war, right? That is 1 Samuel 18, 5. He put him over men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all people because of his diligence, and also in the, in the sight of Saul's servant. Even though he was not accepted by Saul himself, but Saul was still promoting him. And, if, and his servants couldn't deny it. They couldn't deny his quality. And he was accepted in the sight of, of soul servants. So, so, but then, so how do I and you learn diligence? How do we learn to be diligent? And what are the, how, how do we need to behave? How do we need to respond? What are the attitudes that we need to develop in ourselves to really become diligent? Let's, see, let's learn from the, from the life of this master. I think David was a master of diligence. So let's learn from, from his life. Number one, if you really want to be diligent, you make sure that nothing small, to the diligent and to the diligent person, there are no big things and there are no small things. You know, the way you do your small things is the way you do your big things. If you are really diligent, you will have the same attitude so how you do, not just how you do important things, not just how you do big things, but how you do both small and big things. You will have the same attitude. You will have, you will do, do, do little things as if your life depends on it. And that's the way you do big things as well. You will be diligent. You will be, you will pay attention to every detail. You will pay attention not just to the important instructions, but to small instructions as well. You will be, you will be try to be, be the best in everything you do, not just when it pertains to big men, or when only you need to talk to Pastor Sunday, or when you you only need to talk to the pastor or your director. But even when you are talking to a, a homeless person in the street, you pay attention to the very small things as well, and you do your best, even in attitude to them. So, so. People who are diligent, a diligent person is, is, is doing his best, is putting his best effort in everything he does. Secondly, a diligent person doesn't have anything small or big. He doesn't differentiate between big things and small things. He is, you know, he does both the small things and the big things equally well. He does both the little, th the, the little things and the big, th big things equally well, equally well. Next, the next point, if you really want to be diligent, you obey instructions. People who are diligent, they are particular about following instructions. They are particular about being, you know, adherent to instructions. They, they follow instructions. They, they carry out in, instructions. They are particular about what the thing says. They want to do it to the best of their knowledge. They want to follow every bit of the instruction. They want to follow every word of an instruction. They, they, they want to make sure that they put every dot on the eye. They want to follow every comma and every full stop. They read everything. If they read a book, if, an, you know, if an, a diligent person reads a book, it will tell you what is reading, what is written in every chapter. It will tell you what is written in every page even. If a diligent person reads, you know, reads a letter for you, I mean, he, 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 he sees everything. He sees everything. He doesn't, he doesn't miss things up. He doesn't miss, miss, miss things up. He's careful to, to, to pay attention to every detail and to follow every instruction. So diligent people are people of instructions. They follow and they obey instructions. Next point. A diligent person behaves wisely. What does that mean? A diligent person doesn't rush to do things. A diligent person first think through things. A diligent person will think through things before he does them. He doesn't rush to just go and do something. When he gets an instruction, he doesn't just run to go do it. He doesn't just run to, give, to, to, to do something. He, do, he doesn't do things with his legs. He does things with his mind first. He doesn't do things, first of all, with his legs. He does things with his mind. He doesn't run to do things with his hands or leg. He does with his mind first before he applies his hands and his feet. He doesn't just do, obey instructions through his feet. He obeys through his mind first 
through his, 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 his reasoning first before he obeys through his hands or through his feet. A lot of people just want to do things wrong, to go, just go and do it fast, 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 fast. But it's, doesn't just, it's not particular about just going to do things fast, even though he might do it fast. But he first thinks things through. He thinks things through before he goes to do them. So, so if you are if you are if you are diligent, you will always think through ways to do things the best way before you actually uh, set out to do it. Before you actually set out to do it. Next point. Next point. A diligent person is faithful in little things. A diligent person is a faithful person in little things. And a diligent person is also faithful in things when they do things for others. It's not just faithful in things that pertain to him. It's faithful in the things that he does for other people as well. A diligent person is faithful, uh, is faithful in the things that he does for others as well. Next point. A diligent person has the spirit of the sons of Issachar. They know, they kind of know what to do. They know, they, they, a diligent person is careful, knows uh, the use of it, the best use of time. Time and season, time and chance. They know how to take uh, advantage of time and chance, time and season. Like the children of Issachar, Issachar, the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar know what to do, when to do it. They know what and when to do. You know, they, they know time. They know how to work with time. Diligent people know how to work with time. They read times. They know how to work with time. They, 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 know how to, they know how to take advantage of time and season. Time and chance. Diligent people try to be above reproach in whatever they do. In their services, in their products, in their ministry, in their, ministry, in their in their in, yeah in whatever they do in their service to man and in their in their in their sense of uh, work and deliverance and delivery and their delivery they try to be above reproach so diligent people are they they, they do their best they they put in their effort to be above reproach to be above reproach next quality of a diligent person a diligent person is a considerate person a diligent person is a considerate person they try to be, they consider everything. They are very considerate. They are very considerate. They don't just consider their own interest. They consider the interests of others as well. Let me tell you something more about the diligent person. Proverbs 10.4. Let's read it out for you. Proverbs 10.4 says, The hand of the diligent make it rich. The hand of the diligent will always bring to wealth. The hand of the diligent will always create wealth. Diligence is the key to wealth. Diligence always lead to wealth. Proverbs 10.4. Proverbs 10.4 says, He that is slack in his business becomes poor. He that is slack in his business becomes poor. So slackness in business will lead to poverty. So in, you know, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The hand of the diligent make it rich. Dil diligence will always make you rich. So, if you it, it, doesn't, it doesn't say the hand of the Christian make it rich. It doesn't say the hand of the believer make it rich. The hand of the diligent. It didn't say the hand of the diligent Christian make it rich. It didn't say only the Christian that is diligent will make that will, that will become rich. No. Even if an unbeliever is diligent, he will be rich. Why a slothful Christian will be poor? Even if you are Christ, even all the prophets in town come to pray for you, even if all the, you give all the prophetic offerings and the, what offering again do they give? Faith offering or breakthrough offering? Even if you give all the offering in this world and all the prophets in this world come to pray for you, if you are slothful, you will still be poor. You will still be poor. So it does, if, 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 you, if you have two people and one is a, is a Japanese uh, Confucian, so he doesn't even recognize Jesus. He doesn't even read the Bible. But you know, the Japanese people are diligent people. 
So if he's, he has a, he's a diligent Japanese, diligent, and he's not even praying to God, he's not even reading the Bible, he doesn't even recognize Jesus, he will become rich, he will become successful, he will become a king on the earth, he will rule over you, and he will employ yourself as a slave or as a servant, if you are a Christian. But on the other hand, you have a Christian who is praying and is praying and is fasting and is going to the mountain and is getting all the is doing all the offerings and is doing all the tithe and offering and everything. It, no matter how much tithe you pay, no matter how much offering you pay, no matter what church you go, but you are slothful, the, the the Confucian, <laughs> the Confucian Japanese will be successful, it will become it will reign in life. Why you, the Christian, uh, slothful, no, just sluggard Christian who is just praying and believing God for this and believing God for that and confessing that and that, you will become a servant and you will become desp desperate and poor because it's, God is more faithful to his principles than to your prayers because God has exalted his words, his words above his name. So you could be calling on his name till tomorrow. You could be calling on his name as much as you want to. He's calling on his name is a like prayer. You could pray as much as you want to. You could be religious as much as you want to. But he will be faithful. He will be faithful more to the unbeliever that doesn't call on his name. To the unbeliever that doesn't even pray. To the unbeliever that doesn't, he's not even religion. He's not even religious. He will be faithful to that man first. And he will make that man rich first. Than, it will make, than you who is calling on his name day and night and being religious all you want and giving off offering and tithe. Why? Because God has exalted his name. I mean his word. His word above even his own name. Even though you are calling on his name, even though you are called according to his name a Christian, he will still go and be more faithful to that, that, uh, to, to that Japanese or to that Chinese person who is diligent that he will to you so don't let religion blind your eyes don't let religion deceive you don't let religiosity confuse you don't let all those funny doctrines that are coming from our churches now turn you to a fool read the bible for yourself let your eyes be open and this one quality will give you more than your offering prophetic offering, uh, false fruit offering, and all those offering manipulation that you are doing in your churches will, add, will give you. Just be diligent. Just, you know, work on yourself. Be diligent. And you will see that you will get more reward, more, 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 more fruits, more, more results through diligence than through all those money you are wasting in those churches. So, 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 let, open your eyes. Wake up. You know, don't, don't, don't let religion make, make, you, make you become a fool. You know, be, be, you know be, 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 let's, let's just be sensible Christians. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pity what kind of doctrines that people are preaching in the name of Christianity today. We need to, we need to, we need to reject all these, you know, you know pseudo-Christian doctrines. And we need to make those churches empty. We need to just abandon them, leave those churches, and let the pastors come to their senses and let them begin to teach the truth.